Hey everybody, it's I Want To Be Retro. Today we're going to take a look at three different methods to set up a shared database container in Docker. To get started, I'll use Docker Pool to pull down the MariaDB Docker image, as well as phpMyAdmin and WordPress, two web applications that require a MySQL database. The first method we'll look at is called container links, using the dash dash link flag in your docker run command. This is a legacy feature of docker, and should probably be avoided because at some point it will be deprecated and no longer supported. To demonstrate linking containers, I'll begin by running my MariaDB database container. Then in the subsequent phpMyAdmin docker run command, I'll pass the dash dash link flag with the name of the MariaDB container. With phpMyAdmin now linked to the MariaDB container, I can open a web browser and navigate to the web front end. And I can log in with the root MySQL username and password. To add additional applications to the MySQL database, I need to first create the database and a service account user for the new container. We can do this using the docker exec command, then we can issue SQL statements to create databases and users as needed. Obviously we could also use phpMyAdmin to create the new users and databases as well. Now that we have our database and database user set up, we can run additional containers with the dash dash link flag and set environment variables to authenticate to the appropriate database in our MariaDB container. In this second example, I've set up a WordPress container running on port 8880 using the same shared MariaDB container. I'll quickly go through the steps to set up the WordPress site so we can see that the database is being written to. Back in the phpMyAdmin interface, I can navigate to the WordPress database, then view the options table to confirm the shared database is being used by checking the value of the blog name option. Before moving on, I'll clean up my example environment by removing the three Docker containers as well as the working directories. The second method we'll go over for setting up a shared database container is using Docker networking. Again, I'll create my container working directories and then set permissions. With this method, we'll use the docker network create command to create a docker network to allow the containers to communicate. Then in our docker run commands, we'll add the dash dash network flag with the name of the docker network to connect to. Subsequent docker containers can be added to the same docker network, then they can communicate with other containers within the network using the container name. As we'll see, phpMyAdmin can communicate with the MariaDB container using the Docker network we created. And again, we can use Docker exec or phpMyAdmin to create additional databases and users as needed. Then we can run additional containers and attach them to our Docker network using the dash dash network flag so they can communicate with the shared database container. Again, I'll quickly step through the WordPress setup, this time setting the site title to Docker network. Then navigate back to phpMyAdmin where we can review the options table and verify WordPress is using the shared database container. Before moving on to the third method, I'll clean up my example environment by removing the three Docker containers as well as the Docker network and the working directory structure. The third method for setting up a shared database container is exposing ports on the host. We'll start by creating the working directory structure and setting permissions. The twist with this method is for the MariaDB container will forward port 3306 on the host to port 3306 within the container, exposing that port to the local network. Then when creating subsequent containers, we can set the database host to the DNS name or IP address of the Docker host. And again, I'll navigate to the phpMyAdmin web interface and I can log in using the MySQL root username and password. As with the other methods, I can use docker exec or phpMyAdmin to create additional databases and users as needed. Then when creating additional containers, I just set the database hostname to be the docker hostname or IP address. This method would also allow external applications and integrations, ones not running on the same docker host, to utilize the shared database container as if it was running natively. In other words, you can use the database for things outside of just using it for additional Docker containers. 
I'll quickly step through the WordPress setup one more time to show that the shared database is being used to store the WordPress data. 